Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In this video, I thought I would tackle a topic that I receive a lot of emails about, and that is how do you flip a part over to do OP2 for the second side uh, of the part? And so we're gonna take a look at this part and figure out how we're going to machine the top, flip it over and do the bottom. So to start with, I've already set up the top, so you can see kind of how I have this set up uh, done. And I put a little extra stock that I can hang on to below the part so I can machine all the way around the part. So if we look through, I drill some spot drills. I drill the center hole, but that really isn't there. And then I drill the two tapped holes and I drill that center hole through the middle of the part again that isn't there. And then I tap the two holes. We face off the 10 thousandths material that's on the very top of the part, the way that I have it set up. Um, we do an adaptive clearing to remove all the excess material and then we do a contour operation to finish machining all the way around So let's do a quick simulate on this I'm gonna hit play. I'll let it go somewhat quick here Since we're not super concerned about the tool paths We just want to see the results at the end when we're done and I can turn this off to make it look a little better and you might notice I have those red looking gouges there they're really not gouges that's just the tap is bigger than the hole because the hole in fusion I use the hole command so the hole is modeled at the nominal uh, tap drill size so now we're going to do our adaptive clearing to rough out this pocket and then we'll come and do our 2d contour around the outside of it and then the inside of that slot and we're done with our op one now when we flip this, it's good to look at this part in this orientation, uh, or in this state, I should say, because when, when we flip it over, we have this protective hat of stock that's all the way around the part. So we can't touch off on any machine services unless we do something like put a flat edge across the end of the vise that we bought up against or some kind of a stop or something like that that sets our X, and then we could Y off of the vise jaw, the fixed vise jaw, and then we would know exactly where we're at. Um, you also notice on this part that when I drilled that center hole, I drilled all the way through. And if you don't have a super high uh, accuracy tolerance part, you could also stick a probe down in the hole and pick up your X, Y off the center of that hole for there. But the biggest thing I wanted to take note of was this hat of material that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm gonna turn my part back on that I turned off for the simulation. And then we can look at doing the OP2 setup and the OP2 toolpaths. Uh, before we go in too far, I wanna to go to my name and my preferences and show you a little setting that's inside of Fusion that you can turn on if you want to. It's under preview. I'm gonna go into manufacture. And the one that I'm looking for is called continue rust machining. When I turn this on, it's gonna start with the same stock that I left with. Uh, at least the same stock size anyway. So I'll go ahead and apply that and hit OK. And now when I go ahead and I make my setup, I my Z is oriented the right way. It's not in the right location. So in this case, what I want to do, instead of a stock box point, I'm going to choose a model box point, and I'm going to choose this model box point at the very bottom. I'm going to Z off the bottom for this part. So I'll go ahead and click on that point right there. And now when I come to my stock, it's from the previous setup that I used. So the stock in OP2 is the same exact size as what it was in OP1, and that's what I want. Even though that I know I've taken some of the stock off, you can see I've got, I'm not exactly set right, but my Z is set right at the bottom of the part. The reason I like to do it this way is when we get stock uh, from wherever you buy your stock from, it's usually gonna be extruded, and the extruded thickness isn't exact it's off by you know some thousandths of an inch uh, depending on you know how how much that would be but it's it's off more than you'd want for a precision cnc machine part so in op one we face the top of the part off and we know we have a good machine datum and that's where we're going to start referencing our tool paths for op, op two we're going to use the bottom of face for a part as our z zero and I also put the WCS in the center and that allows me to touch off on that hat of material just to get the average, because this is only gonna be my operation, this is only gonna be my WCS for one operation, just the operation that removes the hat of material off of here. So I'm happy with what I have and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I could start programming toolpaths right away, making them from scratch, 
but I like to try to steal as much as I can from my preceding setup. So I have a facing operation in here. I'm just gonna right click on that and say copy. I'm gonna paste it in my setup too. And then I'm gonna expand this out. And before I even regenerate it, I'm gonna rename this part to be flip. Or this operation, I should say, to be flip. So there's our op two, it's called flip. And there's my face. You can see my tool is still upside down, but when I right click on this and generate it, I can also do Control G or Command G depending on Windows or Mac. And there you see that there's my facing toolpath that removes that excess piece of material. Now, when I get to this stage, the hat of material is gone, allowing me to reprobe or retouch off on actual finished machine parts. And if we want to see another trick that we can do with this, if I click on my top setup and I Control or Command and click on my flip setup, now when I simulate this, and I go to this facing operation, you see the hat of materials on there, and when I hit play, it shows me what things are gonna look like when we're done with this. So it's taking that hat of material off. I might have to do that in a couple step downs, but you get the idea. And now we just have the blue areas of material to remove, but we have our exposed green finished surfaces everywhere that we can probe off on. So I'm gonna use that uh, to my advantage now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. And there's a couple different ways I can do this. Um, I might create another uh, setup. Like let's say that I'm using some machine that doesn't have a probe to it. So what I might do now is just duplicate this flip setup and then do the rest of my tool pass. But I would um, that would allow me to re-zero off on on those faces right there and get the exact precise face that I want. Or what I could also do is under the setup, I could say that I want to probe WCS. I could pick my probe and touch off on these faces and re-zero in the program so I could call up that probe in the middle of the program, retouch off on those faces, and then pick up from there. So let me pretend that we don't have a probe. I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel. And now I'm just going to take this operation and I'm going to duplicate it. And maybe I should call this uh, flip hat removal. Now we have this other flip operation. I'll just get rid of the flip too. We'll just call this one flip. And if I extend this out, uh, expand this out, now I don't need this facing operation. I can just go ahead and delete this off. So I'll delete that operation. And then I could come up here and grab other operations or do it from scratch. And I think I'll do it from scratch. So I'm gonna do a 2D adaptive. I'm gonna go and select a tool out of this uh, setup right here. And I wanna use this 3 8 inch end mill that I have. I'm gonna go select my geometry as this edge, and I'm gonna grab this edge over here. I also know that my stock contour only exists inside of that, so I'm gonna choose that as my stock contour so Fusion doesn't cut more than I need to. And now I can come over my passes. Let me reset this to my uh, default, which is 20% of the tool step over. I don't need multiple depths or anything. I wanna leave 10 thousandths radial and 10 thousandths axial to come back and clean up. And I'm gonna set my stay down level pretty pretty aggressive on this one. I wanna stay down more often than not. I'm gonna put a 10 thousandths of an inch lift height, and I'm gonna do a no engagement feed rate of 250 inches a minute. And I'll go ahead and hit okay. And now Fusion will go, and it removed those operations. But you might see that I made a little mistake here, which is sort of good to see how you can uh, see it and correct it. Because the flip, hat, the flip hat removal was the active setup, it added it to that setup instead of my bottom one. So I'm just going to drag this toolpath into flip. There we go. And then I'll activate this. So all future toolpaths come in. And then I'll generate this. And there's my toolpath. Now I just want to take this and turn it into a 2D contour. So I can just right click on this and say create a drived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. That way I don't have to go and repick a bunch of things. When I go to my geometry, my geometry is already selected. My stock contour is already selected for me. Everything's set. I can go over to my passes. I want to turn on roughing passes here. And I don't know exactly how many I need, but 10 should be plenty. So I'll turn on 10 and it won't go outside of that because I have stock contour set. So the tool path will stay inside of the stock. I want to do one finishing step over a 0.01. And then I also want to extend the tool off the part a little bit. And we have to find this one called tangential fragment extension distance to do this. And I'm just going to do about an eighth of an inch here. I'll come over to the linking tab. 
I don't need to do a sweet uh, lead in angle. I'm gonna set that to zero. And I also don't need this vertical uh, lead in. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm also gonna say I want keep tool down so the tool doesn't continue to lift up. And I forgot one other thing on the passes tab. Right now it's only climb cutting. And because we're only taking that little bit of material off of the floor, I want it to be able to go uh, both ways. So I'm gonna check this box for both ways. And now when I hit okay, you'll see that we get the tool path that just goes and cleans that floor up back and forth. So it's gonna clean the floor up and do a finishing pass along the wall. And that should take care of our op two, except for any chamfers or anything like that that we're gonna do. So I have a little example here. Let's jump over to this vise. How do we find the Z in this situation? So when I said we flip this over, we're gonna Z off the bottom. So obviously we can't touch off on the Z in the bottom of the part. So the way that we're gonna do that is eventually the part is gonna sit on top of the parallels. So the way we usually show people how to do this is you take a parallel and you hang it out of the vise and just tighten the vise down on it so it's resting on the vise body. Now with this parallel hanging out, you can come and do a, you can set your Z off that top face and now you've effectively set it off the bottom of the part because you're sitting on top of the parallel where the bottom of the part is going to rest. I have one more thing to show you when it comes to sort of automating these setups with multiple vices in a way you can sort of control visibility and make it easier to work on your part. So let's go look at the last example I have for you tonight. And what I did in this file, it's the exact same thing, basically the same program, everything's sort of the same. The only real change that I made is I put a secondary part in here, um, or secondary vice, so that I could program both sides in the vice to make sure I have proper clearances and everything like that. And so when we wanna go over to the part flip, what we have to do is we have to flip this upside down and then we have to turn off the first vice and make sure the second vice is on. And then if I wanted to go more, do more work on the first one, I'd shut the second one off and go to the first one and rotate back and forth. And eventually that gets to be a, a bit of a pain. So I wanna show you a neat little thing you can do in Fusion to hopefully make this more efficient for you. So I'm gonna start out by editing my top setup. And what I wanna do is go to the fixture and start defining things that are related to my fixture. So now what I could do to make this easier is I could just expand this uh, first vice out and I wanna click on everything except for the solid piece of stock that I have defined. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And I'm gonna go do that very same thing for the flip operation. So let's go edit this. And now I'm gonna expand out my second vice for this and uh, go to find my fixture. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, and click on all the parts in my second part that are the fixture. Notice that their visibility isn't even currently on right now, but that should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now I can minimize this back down. So the reason I did that is down here is a nice little tool called, we can sync the view with active setup and we can sync the stock, the visibility with active setup. So I'm gonna check on both of those and you'll see what happens is that now I've got my top activated and when I go to flip, it flips my part over and turns off the other vise. And when I go activate my top setup, it flips it back over and, and turns the visibility off of the second um, setup that I have. So no longer do I have to worry about toggling back and forth to get this all set up um, with, with manually vis turning the visibility off on things. Once I define the things that are fixtures, when I activate my setups, it just shows me the things that are actively involved in that setup and turns the visibility off of the other things. So you can see my orientation is right. Everything's set up on the screen and centered back for me. So hopefully that's a nice little tip for people working in multiple setups to be able to turn that on and not have to manually go through and turn the visibility of everything on and off. Hopefully you guys like this one. I know this is a question I get all the time. So hopefully this will help you on your uh, programming that requires second operations. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.